Hello and welcome to Kibuta Reviews. Today let's take a look at an interesting car that is beginning to show up on Kenyan roads. This is the Suzuki Hustler. This is a city car that is termed as an SUV styled city car. It almost resembles a smaller version of the Suzuki Jimny. It's a small car but Suzuki tried to give it an SUV look and it surprisingly paid off because this car has sold so well in markets such as Japan, Sri Lanka and even in India. People have appreciated its looks practicality and very impressive fuel consumption. Some of these vehicles competitors include the Suzuki Alto, Daihatsu Mira, Honda N Wagon and Nissan Blaze. These are all small city cars that mostly come with 660cc three-cylinder engines that are aimed for fuel consumption. So will this car do well in the Kenyan market and should you even consider it instead of its competitors or even instead of other vehicles such as the Vitz and Toyota Paso? Before we answer that question, let's first have a detailed look at the specifications of this city car. The particular generation we will be taking a look at is the first generation that was in production from 2014 till 2019. In terms of the price, you can get a 2014 model from around 750,000 depending on the trim level and mileage. 2015 models are going for about 850,000 while 2016 models and onwards are going for well over 1 million shillings. This car comes with two engine options, a 660cc three-cylinder engine, then the other option is also a 660cc but it's turbocharged. The non-turbo variant produces around 51 horsepower while the turbocharged variant produces around 63 horsepower. On average, this car can move from 0 to 100 km power in about 18 seconds, so it's a slow car, it's not tuned for speed or performance but full efficiency. You can get it in either front or all-wheel drive. There are also variants with mild hybrid that uses an electric motor known as Integrated Starter Generator or ISG. Going by what Suzuki says, this ISG is powered by an extra battery that is charged as the car reduces speed and brakes. This is also known as regenerative braking. Now, this extra battery powers electrical systems such as the AC, Bluetooth, connectivity, and it also allows the vehicle to restart quickly in stop and go traffic when the idling stop function is on. Idling stop function is a feature that shuts off the engine in traffic to aid in fuel savings. So generally it's not a fully fledged hybrid system. It only slightly improves the efficiency by relieving some of the load on the standard battery. The gearbox options on this car are either a CVT or a 5-speed manual. In terms of fuel consumption, the non-turbo variant with front-wheel drive can get up to around 30 km per litre, which is excellent. That is no motorcycle territory. The turbocharged variant with all-wheel drive, on the other hand, is not that fuel efficient and it can drop up to below 20 km per litre if you are not that careful with how you drive. In fact, there is really no point in going for the all-wheel drive or turbocharged variant. It will just reduce the efficiency figures. This is a city car that should mostly be used for city drives and one of the main reasons why you would buy it is fuel efficiency. So it makes a lot of sense to just go for the front wheel drive non-turbo variants. The fuel tank is 27 liters. As for the service costs, this car has a very small engine so it will be very affordable to maintain. On average, expect to spend around 5,000 shillings to perform the minor service which should be done after every 5,000 kilometers. Here you will only need to replace things like the engine oil, oil filter and air cleaner. The major service should be done after 10,000 km and on average it may cost about 12,000 shillings. By average I don't mean you will have to spend the exact amount I've mentioned. Someone was saying that the quotation I gave on a certain vehicle was high. What happens is that I receive several quotations from different service stations then I find the average. So if I mention 12,000 shillings on average, it does not necessarily mean you must spend that amount to service the car. You may spend much less or slightly more depending on where you service the car as well as the quality of parts you use. This car gets front ventilated discs and drum brakes at the back which is very sufficient and will, will even be more affordable to maintain or replace compared to rear disc brakes. The carb weight ranges between 750 to around 860 kgs, so it's a very light car. The ground clearance measures in at 180 mm, which is quite good. You will not have to worry about any bumps or uneven road surfaces. Lastly, some of the extra features you can get with this car include alloy wheels, fog lights, navigation with reversing camera, 
steering mounted audio controls, projector headlights, two-tone paintwork, which start and cruise control. So that said, let's talk about its exterior. Do let me know what you think about its design in the comment section. For a small city car, I think it looks okay. That boxy and SUV vibe makes it stand out from all the other city cars such as the Suzuki Alto and the Hatsu Mira. That design has also ensured that it has a very good ground clearance unlike its competitors. Variants with projector headlights and two-tone paint, paintwork look better and more youthful. Moving on into the interior, you will quickly notice that even though this is a small car, it is very spacious at the front row. It's easy to get a good driving position. There's decent legroom. The dash design is very vertical and it also houses the gear lever just like in other city cars such as the Nissan Days and Honda N Wagon. You can also get a two-tone paintwork in the interior to make it look more lively. At the back, the space is ideal for only two people being that this is a narrow car. There is very good leg and headroom. So in terms of comfort, it will just be fine and in fact better than in the Suzuki Alto and the Hatsu Mira. Lastly, the boot is quite small. You can fit maybe just two bags and some other very small items. But if you need more space, you can fold the rear seats. And if that is still not enough, you can also fold the front passenger seat to create a very large loading space. So now, who is this car for? If you are intending to venture into the taxi business and are looking to buy one of the smaller city cars such as the Daihatsu Mira or Suzuki Alto, then this Suzuki Hustler may also be for you. You should check it out or consider it. It's just as well efficient as the Alto, yet it's more spacious, looks better and has a very good ground clearance. It can even be a personal car just for running errands within the city. In terms of reliability, there will be nothing to worry about because it's such a simple car with a small and simple engine and gearbox, especially the non-turbo front-wheel drive variants. The turbo variants and all-wheel drive ones may develop issues with the time, so it's best to just get the front-wheel drive non-turbo. It will be way more reliable and full efficient. So now, how does it compare to other cars such as the Beats and Paso? Beats, Demio and even Paso are wider and slightly more spacious than this Suzuki Hustler. They are also more powerful, faster and comfortable than this Suzuki Hustler. So these cars are all a class above this Suzuki. But if you are looking to buy a Daihatsu Mira, Suzuki Alto, Nissan Days or any other 660cc city car, then I reckon this Suzuki Hustler is a better choice. It deserves a second look. That's it for this episode. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any inquiries or are interested in local used car inspection services or would like to advertise your car for sale on the channel, then feel free to reach me through email or WhatsApp. Also consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars. Thank you so much for all of you who have been subscribing, commenting and giving a like to these videos. I appreciate. That's it for this episode. Stay safe. See you in the next one.